हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल आई होप आप सभी लोगों की तैयारी अच्छी चल रही होगी यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग वेल फॉर सेकेंड जुलाई ई पी एफ ओ एग्जामिनेशन सो टुडे वी आर बैक विद अनदर पी वाई क्यू सीरीज सो दिस टाइम वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द साइंस क्वेश्चन ऑफ एनफोर्समेंट ऑफिसर टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन क्वेश्चन पेपर सो फ्रॉम साइंस सेक्शन देर वर टोटल टेन क्वेश्चन and there was one question which we can categorize under current affairs section so in all we can say total 11 questions were asked in this 2016 enforcement officer examination if we try to do the break up it is something like this so from physics we had two questions and one questions from current affairs from chemistry we had three questions and from biology we had five questions so we can see that biology had more number of questions compared to physics and chemistry so now let us start with the questions and we will try to see what kind of questions were asked by upsc in epfo examination and whether we can attempt those questions using our regular ncert textbooks or any other routine sources so the first question here is of assertion reasoning type so what you can see here is they have given us the two statement and based on that we have to select the correct option so statement 1 says the force on moon due to earth is the action while the force on earth due to moon is the reaction so this is statement 1 and statement 2 says to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so this question is from physics basically from gravitation chapter and uh, we have to identify the correct uh, reasoning here so we know that uh, gravitational force of earth on moon is more than the gravitational force of moon on earth because weight of earth is more compared to moon so since earth weight is larger than moon hence gravitational force exerted by earth is also larger so newton's third law says that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction hence force exerted by moon oh, force exerted by moon is the reaction of gravitational force exerted by earth so both the statement seems to be correct here and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1 so if you see the question paper option a would be correct here now we know that there is something called as centripetal force so the motion of moon around earth is due to centripetal force now this centripetal force is provided by the force of attraction of earth so this question is from physics and it was checking the basic understanding of Uh, gravitation moving on to the next question statement 1 says it is a common observation that if we place a glass of ice water on table at room temperature the ice water will get warmer and statement 2 says heat is energy that flows between a system and its environment because of temperature difference between them so again this is a question from physics and it can be categorized as the thermal properties or from the heat chapter and statement 1 is correct here we know that anything if we take out from the refrigerator and keep it on table it will start melting with time why it is so because this happens due to heat transfer between the system and surrounding here ice water will start melting when it will be kept outside the refrigerator now statement 1 is correct here and statement 2 you know heat is a form of energy heat is a form of energy and this heat transfer takes place due to temperature difference so remember this whenever two bodies exchange heat between them it is the temperature difference which is behind the exchange of heat between the system and its surrounding so again both the statements are correct here and statement 2 is correct explanation of statement 1 so again a is the correct option here now moving on to the third question from science which one of the following materials is not diamagnetic at standard temperature and pressure so what are diamagnetic materials basically so these are the materials which are not attracted to any magnet or magnetic field they do not possess any net magnetic moment of their own so their net magnetic dipole moment is zero basically so their net magnetic mom dipole moment is zero so out of the given option we can see that iron is a ferromagnetic material so obviously it won't be a diamagnetic material so d 
d is the correct answer here moving on to the next question which one of the following gases has the highest solubility in water now this is a question from chemistry and it is checking us the basic understanding like which gas is maximum soluble in water so out of the given options ammonia is the correct answer here now ammonia has the highest solubility in water it is around 31% by weight and why it is has why it has highest solubility because of hydrogen bonding with water so this solubility is due to hydrogen bonding with water so again this is testing the basic fundamentals here and here you need to remember an important law as well which is given in ncert textbook henry's law now what does this henry's law tells us it tells us that solubility of gas in a liquid is directly proportional to partial pressure of that gas so solubility of any gas it is directly proportional to the partial pressure of that gas partial pressure of that gas above the surface of solution and also you need to remember one more thing solubility of any liquid not gas solubility of any liquid decreases with increase in temperature sorry solubility of gas in liquid decreases with increase in temperature so again this we have to remember so out of given options ammonia is the correct answer here it has the maximum solubility now the next question is very basic which is again given in ncert bleaching powder contains so we all know that chlorine is the correct answer here here you can see the screenshot from ncert textbook and we all know that this bleaching powder it is synthesized by action of chlorine gas so it is synthesized by action of chlorine gas and action of chlorine gas with dry slaked lime so here also you can see that bleaching powder is produced by action of chlorine on dry slaked lime ca oh twice and there are some applications of bleaching powder as well so do go through those applications of bleaching powder so here you have to prepare the other other solutions as well like washing soda what is the chemical formula of washing soda where it is used how it is produced and all those things so again a basic question from chemistry and which is doable by going to ncert next question is what is the causal agent of chikungunya so here it is talking about the health and this is a topic a question from biology so it is talking about how chikungunya is caused so we know that it is caused by a virus so chikungunya is a mosquito born disease basically mosquito born disease and it is caused by a chikungunya virus so very basic question moving on to the next question bio remediation is a technology which is being extensively utilized in controlling heavy metal pollution so we know that cadmium or mercury that is hg these are heavy metals which are soluble in water or which may get dissolved in water and their breakdown is quite difficult and what is this bio remediation technique so this is a process where naturally occurring organisms like live microbes are used to break down microbes are used to break down hazardous substances break down hazardous substances like this cadmium mercury etc and into less toxic forms so bacteria fungi algae these are some of the examples of microbes which can be used for uh, in bio remediation technique here you can remember that name of pseudomonas so pseudomonas is a kind of algae which is used in bio remediation technology so again this forms part of chemistry as well or you can say biology as well basically it is form part of environmental chemistry which deals with pollution heavy metal pollutions in river bodies moving on to the next question beauty of some historical monuments is greatly affected by growth of certain living organisms so these living organisms belong to which one of the following groups so lichens is the correct answer here we know that these are the symbiotic association of algae and fungi symbiotic association of algae and fungi and 
what actually they do they form biofilms they form biofilms on stone surface on stone surface so some of the examples are like cyanobacteria algae moss fungi these are the living organisms which are harmful for historical monuments because they will react with the stone surface and they will form the biofilms and they also discolor the monument discolor and degrade the monument by their action so lichens is the correct answer here again a basic question which can be solved with encrt moving on to the next question which one of the following has characteristics of both animal as and a plant so if you have read the ncrt you can easily guess that euglena is the correct answer here euglena has both characteristics of animal and plant euglena when it is an animal euglena when it is an animal it moves ahead with the help of a structure called as flagellum so when it behaves like animal it moves it can move from one location to another with the help of structure called as flagellum whereas it also possess chlorophyll like the plants possess and with the help of chlorophyll pigment they can uh, do photosynthesis and produce their own food as well so euglena is the correct answer here now what about fern so fern we know that is a basically non flowering vascular plant fern is a non flowering vascular plant then moss again it is a kind of plant which belong to bryophyta and earthworm we know it is an invertebrate so basically an animal so out of the given options you can easily eliminate the first three and euglena is the correct answer here moving on to the 100 question uh, in order to save the stored food grains from insect farmers usually mix with them neem leaves so given in ncert textbook ncert science textbook so why neem leaves are mixed with this stored food grains because neem is known for its pesticidal and insecticidal properties pesticidal and insecticidal properties also it has strong antimicrobial effects strong antimicrobial effects and it is a strong anti inflammatory agent as well strong anti inflammatory agent as well so it repel the insects when they try to come near the food grains so very easy question moving on to the last question for today which is based on current affairs so the exam was held in february 2017 and we can see that uh, they framed the question from august 26 isro successfully test launched supersonic combustion ramjet engine that is scramjet which of the following statement is correct with regard to scramjet engine so the first statement says it can efficiently operate both in subsonic and supersonic combustor mode so this statement is correct and india is the first country to demonstrate flight testing of scramjet engine so it is incorrect russia was the first country which demonstrated this scramjet technology so a one only is the correct answer here now regarding this scramjet or ramjet we have an important concept called as mach number and what is this mach number this mach number is basically ratio of the speed of object to the speed of sound so when we call it as subsonic so when the mach number is less than 1 it is known as subsonic and when mach number is greater than 1 then it is known as supersonic so this scramjet engine works in both subsonic as well as supersonic speed and it uses hydrogen as a fuel and oxygen from atmospheric air as oxidizer to work in atmosphere so this question can be categorized in current affairs and basically it comes under the science portion so while preparing for epfo examination do go through the latest developments from isro and drdo because this time also we can again expect the similar kind of question from current affairs so these are the questions from 2016 enforcement officer paper in next video or in next lecture we'll try to see the questions from 2020 enforcement officer paper again we had around 10 questions in 2020 examinations which were doable by going to ncert now as far as sources are considered i read 9th and 10th ncert thoroughly because basic questions are being asked from these two textbooks and 12th biology ncert can be read selectively 
and apart from this if you still want to read you can go with lucent gk science portion so this would be enough for solving all these questions so that's it from today's video thank you